Hi there, I'm Jolene Kent, and this is 4 for 4 Tech, where we're discussing four tech topics in just four minutes. Army researchers have patented a new bullet that's supposedly safer to use in cities. Engineers have created this limited-range bullet that self-destructs to protect civilians. So, James, how does it work? And, you know, patents don't always get made, right? So what's the likelihood yeah, here? you're right, but this is a brilliant idea. It's a proof-of-concept projectile at this stage. The whole idea is it's going to be a bullet with a pyrotechnic material inside it and a reactive material. Basically, when it reaches its destined target range, if it hasn't struck its target, the whole idea is that it drops to the floor. And, like, for soldiers fighting in close combat areas or maybe even potentially for police departments, this could be a real, real big deal. Claire, how do you think this plays out on the streets of American cities? Yeah, I mean, any way to make guns and uh, war is safer is a good thing. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting what the prototype will look like and if they'll, they'll be able to figure out how far um, it will travel once it self-destructs. And I think that's something that they don't know right now. That um, well, So in the future, it'll be really exciting to see. Mark, yay or nay here? Uh, yay. I mean, especially since like, every time we watch the news at night, there's too many reports of victims who had nothing to do yeah. mm -hmm. with, you know, with what was going on at the time. So I say good. <laughs> now, certainly interesting to see innovation come out from the military side, because oftentimes that gets applied to our civilian life. So it's always good to see innovation there, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. All right. Well, moving on. <laughs> Apple and Samsung are always locked in a battle for smartphone supremacy. And Samsung issuing its latest threat. New smartphones and its Galaxy S line. It's the S7 and the S7 Edge. They were unveiled in Barcelona at the Mobile World Congress. They can work under five feet of water for 30 minutes. So, Mark, <laughs> you have the phones. Show us. Sure. What do you think? Uh, look, of the two, I yeah. love the Edge because of the sexier curved display. Uh, and the fact that you're just getting a, a bigger screen. Um, but both phones have a new breakthrough camera with technology that was formerly just in DSLR cameras. It's called a dual pixel camera. Oh. And it focuses two to three times faster than, let's say, the iPhone 6S Plus. And it takes much better pictures in low light. So I feel like that's where like the next battleground is for smartphones. It's not so much about the specs. It's how good a picture can you get. And I think in that area, Samsung looks like it might be leapfrogging Apple. So you think that the camera, which Apple has been so famous for, is actually may, it may actually have an edge at Samsung now? Yes. It does. Uh, at least until the iPhone 7. <laughs> <laughs> right, which is probably coming sometime this fall. So, you know, Claire, what do you think? Looking at these phones, you were playing with them earlier, would you switch? Yeah, I mean, comparing it to the iPhone and Apple's products, which are basically trying to just, like, streamline it and not have any connections. I mean, they're even thinking about taking out their headphone jack. So um, if I look at this, it has... SD card readers and everything like that, I would, I would, I would buy it, maybe. It's not sexy, but what I like about these <laughs> is the better battery life. You know, with the, uh, with the yes. predecessor of the 6, the battery mm -hmm. life wasn't all that. They've really addressed it with these two phones. Well, very good. Thanks for bringing those in. They yeah, look sure. good. Yeah. All right, well, we have to move on to very serious topics. Are you a cat person? <laughs> maybe not into that whole litter box thing. Well, Hasbro has something for you. It's a $99 robotic cat that's meant to give you all the same cuddles and snuggles of real live cats without the smell. So, Claire, you are the expert on this. If cats, you know, I think they're already trying to kill us anyway. So, is this an improvement? Maybe save yourself and just get a robotic cat? Yeah, I mean, if you hate litter and you hate cleaning up after your cat, you hate um, just having to take it to the vet, all these vaccines, I guess it's a great option. It's $99, and it's just like a one-time buy. But at the same time, I mean, you're buying a pet because it's a living being. You want to take care of it. You want to nurture it. So I just I can't see a robotic cat being able to do that for you. What do you think, Mark? I, I, feel like they're not, <laughs> I feel like they're not sneaky enough. Like, one of the great things about cats is that they're so unpredictable, and you never know what they're going to do. Um, but I, I can't wait for the dog version because my wife is asking for another dog, and I, I could just say, here's a robot. Here is a robot. <laughs> James? No, I mean, I'm partial to robots. I'm partial to toys. Like, I was playing with BB-8 last weekend. But yeah. this, I mean, is a, a robot cat, or is it kind of like having a dead cat just sat oh. in your lap that doesn't really do a great deal? All right, I went into like, this until you said that. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. You know I mean? It's, it's, it's odd. A, it's a little weird. But you know what? Maybe for some people it's easier. Yeah. The elderly or the kids who can't quite handle the litter scooping. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have to move on. No more talk of kitty litter. When you flip on that light switch in the morning when you get up, you might forget the millions of people around the world go without electricity or any form of power every single day. And a CEO and philanthropist wants to change that. His company has invented a static bike that can turn human energy into electricity for free. So, James, how does this work? So this is the free electric bike. It's the CEO of the company behind 5-Hour Energy Drink. 
You know, he's basically built this stationary hybrid bike, and the whole idea of it is that it could generate, through cycling for one hour, it could generate enough power for a small rural household for 24 hours. Absolutely brilliant idea. He's initially targeting this at India, but a huge swathe of the world where energy is a real, real issue. I think it's a great idea. Claire, do you think it can have the impact that we hope it could have, given how efficient and inexpensive it is? I mean, yeah, anything that's like clean, efficient, and cheap, especially in areas that really need it, like India, um, I think would be great. But at the same time, it's really a, a matter of if it will take off, if, if people will actually use it. Because if they don't use it, then it won't be useful. You know, what I like about it is that they're focusing on the power. Because mm -hmm. you have Facebook and other companies that are trying to bring the Internet yep. to these areas. But if you don't have devices that don't have power, right? So, th And it's also brilliant cause marketing on, on the part of 5-Hour Energy, even though it's you know not them that's doing it. It's the founder. But. But I like it's, that idea. I think it's so interesting. It, it's just, okay, we just got the buzzer. All right, <laughs> let us know what you think. I don't want to violate the buzzer there. Tell us what you think with the hashtag 444Tech. And that's it for this episode. We will see you right back here next week.